Hey guys, it's Josh, the 98 Note All, coming to you today to talk about what's going on in the world of baseball this past weekend. Before we do, guys, take a moment, hit subscribe to the channel. That way, you know when new videos come out. I got stuff coming out every day talking about Major League Baseball, college baseball, really just baseball in general. Having fun doing it. I'm a fan, just talking about baseball from a fan's perspective. So, guys, let's jump into this. What a great weekend of baseball. There's been some fun stuff going on. College baseball is a full speed right now some great matchups have been going on major league baseball is gearing up for opening day we're only i think like what two and a half weeks away so we're getting there and i'm just loving it uh right off the bat i mean the first thing i'm loving miking up the players and i said it in a video a couple weeks ago how much fun i i thought it was to have you know different guys like like chris bryant anthony rizzo just miked up and, and hearing their thoughts and hearing them goof off and man i'm loving it there is so much good stuff. Malik Smith was mic'd up the other day and he was talking with King Griffey Jr. who was up in the box. That was fun. I'm just, I'm loving it. Freddie Freeman's mic'd up the other day when he uh, scored on that bloop pop-up uh, from first base. This stuff is gold. I mean, this is, this is awesome stuff that people are talking about. And really, I know it's not Major League Baseball that's necessarily doing it. It's more ESPN and, and the different, uh, different, networks doing this but they're doing something right they're doing something right and it's awesome but guys right off the bat the first thing i saw this weekend that that i saw that was maybe one of my favorite things i've seen all year long is there was a, a kid i think his name was drew and he was on the field for the washington nationals just kind of near the dugout he was a part of the make a wish foundation got to travel to spring training uh for his wish, which is awesome. That's that's cool. When a seven-year-old wants to go to spring training, that's a true fan right there. And he's on the field just kind of goofing off, and he turns around, and there is Trey Turner, who is this kid's favorite ball player. And the look on the kid's face was just priceless. He was just in awe. He froze instantly. He saw his favorite ball player standing five feet away from him, looking at him. And Trey gives him a hug, plays catch with him, and it was so awesome. I mean, it was it was one of the best things I've seen. Like I said, it, it was it was just unbelievable to see the kid's face and the excitement, and for that to happen on a baseball field, you know what? You you can't define how important baseball is to people. You just can't. It, it can impact lives in so many ways. This was a perfect example for that. You now here's a kid once again. Make a Wish Foundation. I'm, I'm I'm willing to bet he's gone through a lot of hard days. You don't get to be in the Make a Wish Foundation because you have a perfect life. You get there because you've you've struggled with disease or illness. And here's this kid for a moment. That didn't matter. It was all about being on the field with his favorite player. And Trey did a great job. I mean, everything I saw was was just him interacting and being completely focused on that kid. And that's awesome. That is so awesome. So Trey Turner to you, thank you very much. You know, that's that's what baseball is all about. That's what baseball players, you know, do a lot of times. There's a lot of players who do this type of stuff, but just keep it up. So also happening this weekend, Trevor Bauer hosts a branding seminar for his fellow players, and there was a lot of guys there. I saw some pictures of it, and I'll be honest, guys. You know, you you've heard me say Trevor Bauer has become one of my favorite players. I, I love his honesty. Yes, he's kind of harsh at times, but at the same time, you know what he's thinking. He doesn't hold back. He's not going to lie to someone. He's not going to tell them what, what he want, what they think, what they want to hear. He's very honest, tells it like he sees it. And when it comes to branding, he's a guy who knows how to market himself. He does a good job of it, uh, does a good job of marketing the people around him, the organizations. You know, I'll be honest he's probably one of the best to do it. Uh, you know, like there's better players. Mike Trout's a better player, but Mike Trout doesn't market himself or brand himself nearly as good as Trevor Bauer does. And if he did, you know, baseball might be a lot different if we had more guys like Bauer, not necessarily with their brashness or their harshness or their being vocal, but just how they brand themselves, being out there more for people to see. It could help baseball become more noticed in the eyes of the the common fan and even the just the non-fan also going on this weekend the astros played some baseball and 
every video I see makes me laugh a little harder just because of what's going on. You have you have a fan, a kid, I'm guessing probably 11, 10, 11, 12, with a sign out in the outfield that says fastball. And he's running around with it. And he has, I think he had another one that, that said change up. And, and that was funny. The kid, won, the kid won the internet that day. I mean, he really did. Then you had another fan who was sitting in one of the walkways next to a garbage can. And every time the pitcher would get ready to pitch, he'd bang the garbage can. And, you know, it was just people were laughing. Uh, I think at the uh, Cleveland Indians, uh, Colorado Rockies game, a pitcher slipped and, and, and threw a ball, hit a batter. And someone in the, in the stands was like, no, save that for the Astros. And I'm, <laughs> this is not going away. I know that a lot of people in the Astros organization were thinking that once they came out with their apology, which was crap, that this would blow over. And it's the exact opposite. It's getting bigger. It's getting bigger every day. And the season hasn't started yet. So now you got the Twitter account, the, you know, the, the Asterix and the, the, their shame tour, the Astros shame tour. Uh, I follow that one. Some hilarious videos going on. So this is not going away. I know all you Astros fans who thought it would go away. It's not going to. And you might, and I know a lot of you are saying, well, yeah, we're in your heads. No, no, you cheated. And the Astros cheated and it hurt the game of baseball. So it's not that they're in our heads, it's that fans are mad. That's what's going on. So um, this isn't going away. I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm actually tuning into Twitter uh, every so often to see if there's anything new that I can laugh at and have fun with. And there's been a lot of great stuff, especially this year. There's been a lot of stuff uh, from Cardinals games when they're playing the Astros. Just it's been pretty good. So guys, jumping off the Major League Baseball wagon for a little bit, jumping into the college baseball. This weekend, there was uh, a matchup between uh, Quinnipiac, I believe that's how you say it, and Mississippi State. A one-run ball game late in the game. Catcher set up outside. I'm sure you've, you've probably seen the video. Pitches inside. Catcher reaches across, pulls it back, trying to get a strike. Now, the ball was in the strike zone. I really believe it was in the strike zone. I think everybody kind of agrees with that. But the way the catcher reached across and tried and jerked, it really gave the appearance that it was not a strike, that it was out, that it was way too far inside, yanking it back. And, you know, as an umpire, you kind of base a lot of your strike calls on where the catcher is set up and how he how he catches it. Because, you know, it's not always easy to see the plate, not always easy to see the batter. You can't see everything. You kind of get a feel for what's a strike and what's not a strike. So when you have a catcher reach all the way across and then try and pull it back in, your instincts say ball because the catcher has to reach that far, even if he is set up outside. So um, once again, I think it was a strike. I think the umpire missed that call. I think most fans can agree that that was a strike, missed call. But I think also a lot of fans can realize why the umpire didn't call it a strike. Not that he didn't think it was a strike, just that he, you know, when you get that, that reaching, that motion, it, it's deceptive. It makes you think it's farther inside than it really was. Uh, then the catcher who was quite mad, I mean, he was livid, got tossed. Now, I don't, this one's tough for me because I understand why the catcher was mad and I understand why the umpire called it a ball. And I think the catcher at some point crossed the line and got tossed because the umpire gave him a, a few seconds to let him vent. He, when, the, when the catcher was mad, the umpire did not ring him up right off the bat. He let him be, be angry. He let him say stuff. He let him do stuff. It wasn't until five seconds, six seconds into the thing that that's when he tossed him. And so I understand both sides. It's not an easy thing. Uh, it sucks. But at the same time, as a catcher, you have to realize if you're reaching that far across your body, it's a hard thing to get a strike called unless that ball is dead center. Um, it's going to be a tough call for an umpire. So I get both sides. Don't agree with the umpire's call. Don't agree with necessarily the catcher's reaction all the way. I have no problem with him being frustrated, being angry. But he, I think he clearly crossed the line after a while because he was given the right to vent his frustrations initially, and then he kept going. So is what it is. Um, you know, it's never fun. I know a lot of pitchers are saying that if their catcher stands up for them like that, they would play with them all day, every day. And that's that's true. I mean, you want a teammate who's going to give him – give everything he has to help you the, you know, the best he can. So 
looking at the rankings, I know University of Florida, number one, they're undefeated. That Florida's had some great teams in the last few years, really dominant players coming out. Uh, not all those players turn into great major league players, but still there's been a lot of great talent out of Florida. They're going to be, they're going to be tough. I know UCLA jumped up uh, to, I think they're number four, number five, right around there. So loving it, loving it. College baseball is going. I've been watching stuff on ESPN plus because uh, I have that part of my, part of my Disney plus package, man. It's so nice to be able to turn on a college game and just sit back and relax and just enjoy it Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sundays. I'm usually at in whack games. So uh, it's been fun. Last thing I want to do is talk about Dallas Baptist. Uh, they're in the top 25, got a great team, but one of their players, Andre Sosa got hurt. I, I don't think it was this week. I think it's been a few days, a couple weeks since he got hurt, uh, but he's actually played here in Longview two years with the college black bears, a college wood bat summer league team. Great guy. Interviewed him a couple years ago. He's, he's very quiet, very humble, but at the same time, he is one of the most competitive people I've seen on the field. Super talented. I know this year Dallas Baptist was working him as a catcher, uh, but really Sosa has been a third baseman, a second baseman, a first baseman. He plays wherever he's needed. Very talented guy, a guy who could have been drafted this year, but now with the injury, he's got his uh, medical red shirt for this year because he only played in five games. So he'll be back next year. But I think he's a guy with his bat could be drafted. I really do. He's got a, a strong bat. He's got a when that ball hits, it, it pops off pretty hard. He hits pretty hard. So shouting out to Andrew Sosa. Get well soon. Uh, have a good recovery. See you next year playing for Dallas Baptist. So, guys, with that, that's your baseball recap for the weekend. A lot of great stuff. We're getting closer to opening day. I had a great fantasy draft for my keeper league on, on Saturday night. Got a pretty good team. I think I might have a chance to win this league. Um, you know what? Have to see how injuries happen. And I've got Justin Verlander on my team, so I need to trade him. I've thrown some proposals out to guys trying to dump him. I want another starting pitcher just because once I get rid of Verlander, I will have zero Astros on my team. Can't go wrong there. So, guys, I'm Josh, and so now you know it all. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Guys, once again, subscribe. We've got videos coming out every day, lots of fun stuff. Just talking baseball. See you guys later.